Any, uh, anybody in here running a call center at all or a help desk type scenario? Okay, so we didn't cover work groups earlier. Uh, work groups are our basic entry level call center. So I'll go back and cover those. Now these come with the system, but the, the tools that you run on the end user's interface, there are, there's a fee for that, so I just want to make sure I'm you know, clear on what's included and what's not for everybody in the room. But the, uh, let's see if I can pull up the work groups for you real quick. I skipped over that earlier, I apologize. But these are, again, our basic level ACD. It serves about 80% of the needs we see out there probably. Uh, and then we have a higher level contact center, which is called an enterprise contact center. And it gets into the more true percentage skills-based routing. It gets into your multimedia as far as web chat and things like that being a part of your call center. But work groups solve a lot of the issues we see out there. Like I said, about 80%. It's just like adding a user. You give it a name. What really gets interesting is about halfway through the screen, we go to edit agents. From here, I can choose who I want to be a member of this group and just move them over. If Kenny's my go-to guy and I want to use a top-down ringing pattern, I just move him to the top of the list, which is just one of the ringing patterns. I can see who's logged in and logged out. If I want to set up a queue, if a call comes in and all my agents are busy, what do I want to happen to that call? Do I want to put them in a queue or do I want to give them voicemail? It's up to you. If you put them in a the queue, you can announce things that are going on within the company or specials you may be running. Uh, you can give them the option to punch out, just like an auto attendant. If they want to if you say, hey, leave a voicemail to be returned within three business hours, they could do that. And you can tell it how long to stay in this step before it rolls through the next step. And each step, you can announce the estimated wait time if you like, or you can even skip steps if you want to. And sometimes people will skip them because what happens is you set up your time limit. When it gets to the last step, you then have the option to overflow the call. So if you've got more than one group, if group A doesn't answer the call, you can now overflow that call into group B and have it hold its spot in both queues. So if an, if an agent still comes available in group A first, that call will go back to them and allow them to answer that call. So it'll do that for you automatically. Again, things like ringing patterns, we have the ability to do top down, round robin, longest idle, or simultaneous. And then you got your call forwarding condition. When no answer, busy condition, maybe you want to put them in a the queue. If all your agents are logged out, probably no reason to put them in the queue because everybody's gone home. We could then just route them to voicemail or to a third party answering service if you want. And you can set your maximum number of rings per agent and then the maximum number to customer hears. I had a complaint one time where a uh, customer's like, well, they're just hearing a ring, 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 and so they're just hanging up and giving up on it. Well, I went and looked, he had his ring set to like 21. I was like, buddy, nobody's going to listen to 21 rings. You give it about three and they're hanging up, especially in a call center environment. But that's what it looks like from a management standpoint. From an agent standpoint, you can actually come over here and look at your queue and see, like here I'm a member of two different work groups, so I could see all the calls that would be stacked in each one of these queues. And they would stack them up and show them all to me by caller ID, name and number down below, as well as the number they could dial in. If you have different dial-in numbers that you want to be able to see, we could show you that as well. And you could have sounds and alerts, all that good stuff. But as a supervisor, you don't only need to see the queue, but you probably need to see your agents as well because you want to see what everybody's doing. So if I go into Agent Monitor, I can now see all of my agents. I can see if they're logged in or logged out. If I know Charles is sitting over at his desk and he's not logged in, guess what? I can just go log him in, make him start taking calls. <laughs> I can also come in here and do a right mouse click and, and listen in on his calls. I could record his calls. I could barge in and take his calls over. I could coach to him in his ear, do the silent whisper in his ear to coach him. All that with a click of a mouse. And that's the standard ACD, which we call work groups. All right.